I know I'm running the risk of bursting some of your retirement dreams. And that's never my goal, but as a financial advisor for over 20 years, I've seen too many people make these large purchases early in their retirement and regret it later. So let's go for a walk and talk about why I think you have to be insane to think about buying a brand new RV. Hey, so as I said, financial advisor for over 20 years, I've helped guide hundreds of families into retirement. But, you know, a fair question is, hey, so what the heck do you know about RVs? Uh, and, you know, tangentially, having seen my clients go through it, having heard some of the, the nightmare stories, you know, that's kind of the antidotal um, background that I have to help out on something like this. But as importantly, uh, in a previous life, uh, I used to do a lot of flying in small airplanes. In fact, I've got what's called my airline transport pilot rating, which allows me to fly for the airlines. And so I've bought and sold six or seven different airplanes throughout my uh, throughout my younger life, which is another major purchase. So if I did that, why do I think people are nuts to buy an RV? It's not just that it's expensive. It's not just that if you look at the usage uh, for an RV, the average person uh, says that they're going to use it about 30 days a year. Uh, and, you know, they do end up using it about 20 to 25 days, depending on which study that you want to believe. So I think that's actually a pretty decent track record of what the goal is and what people use. It's certainly better than airplanes. Um, the vast, vast majority of, of small, light airplanes are flown less than 100 hours a year. And at 100 hours a year, you're definitely better off renting. But recently, I saw a video on YouTube from an, an attorney standpoint. It was a, a lawyer's YouTube channel, and I'll link to it in the show descriptions, where he talked about the legal aspects, the contracts that these big manufacturers, these big dealers are forcing people to sign when they buy a brand new RV. And he was just going through, you know, they're, they're so unfriendly to the consumer you know, why would you want to be spending this kind of money and be giving up so many of the rights that you otherwise would have? Let me just share a couple of these rights that uh, he was giving up. He gave an example of a, a Virginia couple that bought a, a $100,000 RV. So this is more like a converted van. They bought it in Virginia, but they gave up their right to return. Uh, I believe the, ter the legal term, and I'm not an attorney, I should say that here. Um, I am a financial advisor, but I'm not an attorney and I don't pretend to be an attorney. Uh, so again, I'll link to his video, but he was saying people give up their right to return. Let's say it's a lemon. Uh, and normally, like with a vehicle, you might have the right under a state's lemon laws to actually rescind that purchase and just say, hey, I'm, I'm backing out of this purchase. It's, that, it's as if it never happened. So people are signing away that right. They're signing away their, their right to sue the seller and they're, they're signing away or they're pre-agreeing to a forum selection. I guess in Indiana is, is where these RV manufacturers like to have uh, these, these cases tried. And, and some people would say, well, you know, I, I, I didn't understand what I was what I was signing. I was at the dealer and they said, you know, sign this. It's just a requirement of, of buying the vehicle uh, and they sign it. But this attorney was explaining once you sign an agreement like that, the court is assuming that A, you read it, B, you understood it and C, you agree to it. So saying, hey, this was a bunch of legalese is not going to help you out. So from a legal standpoint, Buying an RV is just fraught with legal challenges and you're at a huge disadvantage unless you're an attorney yourself or you're willing uh, to pay for an attorney when you're buying the RV. The other thing is, like any vehicle, RVs depreciate very, very quickly. And so this attorney actually, to his credit, did a follow-up video and said, here's what I think you should do instead. And he said, you know, he thought you should, you should uh, buy a used RV where somebody else signed those draconian uh, contracts. You don't have to sign that, that draconian contract. It's between you and the person that you're buying it from. So not only do you save money because it, it's, it's something that's been depreciated, just like buying a new car, 
uh, but you're avoiding signing those draconian rules. So you're saving money and you have more rights, which I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, so I looked up some stats on RVs uh, and from RVBusiness.com, they say that 12 million households actually have RVs and 55% of RV owners are 55 or older. So it definitely does fall into the category of a retirement dream. And I get that. You know, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of camping and tents. Uh, I had a, a, a sleeping mat and I slept on the floor and I had a lot of fun being able to do that. Clearly, you can go to a lot of places and you can stay in the park, in the national park, places like Yosemite or the Grand Canyon. You know, those the hotels are far way off. So if you can if you can camp there, if you can RV there, you're going to have a different experience. And I completely get that. And, and candidly, probably the majority of my sleeping on the ground days in a tent are behind me. But maybe not. Maybe I have a few more. So. You know, the older I get, more appealing an RV sounds, except for all the headaches, right? So the average RV owner is planning on, on using the RV for about 30 nights. They end up using it in actuality for about 30 nights, which, again, is not horrible. I think that, that, that the, those numbers probably make sense. Forty uh, percent of RV owners uh, are retired. So, again, it just supports that. It's something that particularly newer retirees are looking forward to. So I mentioned this attorney uh, followed up his video where he said you had to be insane to buy an RV, a a new RV. Uh, And he said, you know, here's the genius way to do it. And the genius way to do it was was to buy a used one. And I had to take that one step further. I'm going to I looked into what does it take to actually rent an RV again? It's on my list. I can see myself uh, enjoying a, a couple RV trips. I definitely will not be buying a new one and probably will not be buying uh, a used one either just because of the hassle factor. But in general, when I looked up online, you know, if you think you're going to be using the RV like three weeks, four weeks out of the year, most people would say you should rent. But if you're going to use it for the whole summer, let's say you're going to retire in your first summer, um, you're, you're going to travel the country in an RV. In a situation like that, a lot of the online forums would say you're better off buying a used RV and then selling it at, at the end. Now, you got you got to be careful. you got to buy wisely like anything in life. So do a pre-purchase inspection. And that's a, a great tip uh, for an RV. Definitely for an airplane, you want to do a pre-purchase inspection. Uh, and same thing even with the vehicle. You know, if you're buying a uh, a thirty thousand dollar used car, or a twenty thousand dollar used car. Take it into a mechanic, have a pre-purchase done. I, I've never bought a new car in my whole life. It doesn't mean I won't buy a new car someday. But to date, almost sixty years old, never bought a new car. But I've had pre-purchases done on every car that I've bought, except for the first one I bought, and that's where I learned my lesson. And I've never had the pre-purchase not pay for itself. The mechanic always found some things that needed to be fixed. And and so I ended up getting back at least the cost of that pre-purchase. Even more important when it comes to an RV. And it doesn't mean it's going to keep you from getting a lemon. It just means, you know, you've done what you could. You, You had it checked out. You had a mechanic look at it. Okay, now what about renting? What about instead of buying a used RV, what if you rent? So I I looked on NerdWallet. NerdWallet had an article on this, and there's there's three companies that they mentioned, and none of this is uh, sponsored or none of this is an endorsement of these three companies. But the three companies they mentioned are RV Share, which is kind of like an Airbnb for RVs. Another one is like Cruise America. That's more like a staying at a at a hotel where it's a big corporation and you're renting from the corporation. And then the third one that Nerd Wallet seemed to give a, a lukewarm review to is an organization called Outdoorsy. So if you just look up Nerd Wallet RV rentals, I'm sure you'll find this article. Uh, it mentioned that the largest RVs are some called the Class A, and they say for older RVs, RVs that are 10 years or older, it's 150 to $250 a night. For the next size down, a Class B RV, it's 100 to $200 a night. Same thing with a Class C, which is one size smaller than the Class B. Now, if you want a newer RV, 
They're saying the Class A, the large ones, are $300 to $450 for a night, and the Class B and the Class C are $200 to $400 a night. So that gives you an idea. And then there's a bunch of upcharges as well. Mileage is about $0.35 cents a mile. And, you know, you won't want to drive one of these. Let's say you wanted to go to the Grand Canyon. You won't want to rent that in Los Angeles and drive it out to the Grand Canyon. You'd want to rent the RV somewhere nearby uh, so you don't have to pay the mileage. But typically you get like 100 miles a day free, 35 cents a mile above that. Then the generator for electricity, generally you get an hour or two hours a day included in the rental rate, but then you're paying like three to five dollars an hour to run the generator of course you got a cleaning fee when you're done and if you leave everything in great shape uh, cleaning fee is 250 dollars but obviously you can take these places rvs places that are muddy and dirty so the cleaning fee can go up from there uh, and then insurance you know these are expensive vehicles god forbid if you were to get in an accident and damage the rv or even worse damage yourself or somebody else so you got to make sure that you, that you have insurance. So again, my channel is not about bursting any bubbles, but I it, it is about helping you make good financial decisions in your life. And so that's the spirit that I, I share this video in. I applaud anything that gets you excited about retiring and thinking about taking full advantage of the youth of your senior years. And that's really what this video up here is. Five reasons to retire as soon as you can. I'll see you in there. Thanks for watching this video. Bye-bye.